We are changed by prayer. But it does matter to whom we pray. By beholding, we become changed. And for what we are praying. Our brains are amazing quantum computers. They're composed of 100 billion neurons. More than 1 trillion supporting cells in 3 pounds. Each neuron can have up to 10,000 connections to other neurons. More than 40 quadrillion interconnections. It's a number we can't even really understand. Now these 40 quadrillion dendritic interconnections in our brain are comprised, these connections are primarily dendrites. And within each neuron, there are 10,000, excuse me, 10 million microtubules. Each microtubule is constructed or built out of billions of tubulin molecules. And each molecule is built out of 445 amino acids, which are made up of various atoms that share electrons and have these electron clouds. So keep this in mind now. Quadrillion of dendrites. Within them, they have tens of millions of microtubules made up of billions of tubulin. Can you do the math? Quadrillions times millions times billions. <laughs> to get the number of tubulin uh, molecules now. It's, it's, you, you just can't calculate it. And the atoms uh, of, of, of the tubulin molecules, 445 atoms sharing electron clouds, uh, they share these electron clouds, and these electron clouds in the tubulin, in the dendrites of your neurons, in your brain, exist in a state of uncertainty until you make a choice. And when you think about something and choose something, electron clouds in certain dendrites will collapse and make a conformation change in the tubulin structure of the dendrite, solidifying the memory or the belief. Whether you accept a truth or believe a lie, this is how beliefs are formed. Your act of choosing to believe will cause the confirmation changes in the electron clouds which cause the change of the dendritic structures solidifying that belief into your brain. This is the process of choosing. Your power of choice. Have you ever read an author that said, everything depends on the right action of the will, that's your power of choice. Whether it's true or false, when you choose to believe, whether it's a purposeful conscious choice or a passive choice, just accepting what you've been told, okay, I believe that, you're being changed. This is why we can have a change of heart, a change of insight, a change of conviction, a change of belief very quickly. Because it's electron cloud configuration changes collapsing in moments of time. But habits don't change quickly because habits require neuronal pathways to be laid down. And so your beliefs, your beliefs and convictions and understanding are not new neuronal pathways. It's when you have a new belief and you start putting it into practice, the new belief is changing the electron clouds and dendritic structures instantly. But then when you choose to practice it, your brain will activate new pathways, creating new uh, neural circuitry, and stop activating old pathways, and old ones are pruned back, new ones are established, and it becomes habitual, automated. Your beliefs and memories are stored in the brain tubular structure until something happens to cause you to re-examine your currently held belief, to reevaluate it. And in that reevaluation, the electron clouds go back into a state of uncertainty. If you're honestly reevaluating a position you've held, you're putting those electron clouds back into a state of, re of uncertainty. And if you come to a new conclusion, they will reconform again in a new, in a new for uh, constellation. This is why the Bible tells us to rejoice in our trials because they build character. You see, the difficulties in life, I see it in my practice all the time. Look at your own history. The difficulties in life will cause us to go, wait, 
What am I doing wrong? What have I misunderstood? What belief have I uh, not under, ha had proper? It gives opportunity for reevaluation, reexamination, doesn't it? And that's the electron clouds go back into a state of uncertainty in those regions or domains you're examining. And if you bring new truth in to change that, they will reconform in a new way and you're being changed by the truth. Literally changed by the truth. The truth will set you free. This is why Satan does not want truth presented. He wants to silence voices of truth. This gives insight into the law of worship by beholding we are changed in psychiatry known as modeling, neurobiologically and characterologically becoming changed with what we admire, worship, think about, and choose and act upon. Our beliefs initially collapse those electron clouds and then the reaffirming of those by rethinking them over and over again, reviewing them over and over again, uh, reciting them over and over again, practicing the principles of them over and over again causes neuronal pathways to grow and old ones to be pruned and our brains change and we become rewired and habituated in the new pathways. Thus we are changed and transformed by what we think, value, worship, watch, believe, and engage in. If we spend time watching the vulgar, the exploitive, the debasing, the cruel, the selfish, the deceitful, that kind of sounds like basically anything you watch on the news, doesn't it? <laughs> you think I'm kidding? It fit every one of those. If you spend your time watching these or otherwise ungodly material, you're going to be changed by it. Our quantum matrices will realign. Our neural networks will rewire to come more and more into harmony with what is selfish and evil. That is, and let me restate that in a new words, that becoming realigned with what is demonic. This gives greater importance to the biblical exhortation to fix your eyes on Christ. Or to focus upon whatever is true. Now if you focus only on what's true, how much news are you watching these days? I mean, you can watch the weather. Sure. The tornado warnings they have on the radar. Okay. Okay. The hurricanes they're tracking coming in. Come on. Yeah, but the, there's a place to prepare because but you're. But their reasoning for what's behind that it uh, may not be true. Okay. <laughs> so whatever is true. Where did I go here? Yeah, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. How much of the media fits, fits this? How much of the messaging uh, is coming out fits this? I hope our website does. I hope our Facebook page does. I hope what we're putting out does. But how much of what's out there fits this? Gives insight into how the Holy Spirit can indwell a person and bring healing. You see, truth sets free. Truth heals because truth changes confirmation and reconfigures our brain. Uh, truth realigns us with the source of truth such that we become more sensitive to the spirit of truth. And as we choose the truth, focus upon the truth, internalize the truth, meditate upon the truth, worship the God of truth, we experience alignment of our brain circuitry and our minds with God and become indwelled by his spirit. Our resonance frequencies of those oscillating uh, uh, molecules and electron clouds in our brain resonate in harmony with God. And we're sensitive to the movements of the Spirit. Consider this like, as far as about being indwelled by the Spirit, if you're in touch with the Spirit, if you're aligned your heart and mind with the principles of God and the truth of the Holy Spirit. Think of this like your computer being indwelled by an antivirus software. That software doesn't overrule your decisions or actions, but rather is in the background, constantly monitoring for malicious code, alerting you when something harmful is identified, and working with you to remove it. But you remain free to ignore and override your antivirus software. Yes? 
But if you do ignore it and do override it, the malicious code may eventually defeat the antivirus software on your device and take control of your computer. That's a wonderful metaphor for your mind and heart. The Holy Spirit that you have invited in and you align with by choosing the truth and focusing on the godly, you become more sensitive. And as things try to infect malicious code, lies, distortions, false beliefs, uh, uh, angry, hostile, ungodly moods or motives, as they try to infect, the Holy Spirit alerts you. That's, that's not, you don't want to go down that. That's, that's false. That, that's unhealthy. That's destructive. And if you work with those, Holy Spirit, well, give me freedom from that, Lord. Help me practice your principles in this circumstance and apply your methods. Then the malicious code doesn't take root. But you're free to ignore it. And if you do, if instead you choose the vile, the vulgar, the crude, the debasing, the selfish, the exploitive, the manipulative, you are changed in the process. What we choose, watch, esteem, promote, value, changes our brains. When we make coercive force and the intimidation the principles that we value, we become more demonic. The Holy Spirit alerts us to the wrongfulness, the danger, but we remain free. But if our emotions become inflamed, we may choose to ignore the spirit and pursue the course contrary to God's ways. In that path, we move ourselves out of harmony with God, sear our conscience, warp our characters, harden our hearts. The spirit continues to send his warning messages, alerting us, alerting us, alerting us. But if we don't repent, we don't realign with God, don't embrace his principles, don't reject the principles, the lies of the world, then over time we destroy the faculties within us that are sensitive to the Spirit of God. Do you see this happening in the world right now? I see this happening. I'm warning against it. And, and lo and behold, people attack me for giving the warning. The sinful, uh, sinful world operates on imperialism. Rules legislated and enforced by coercion. When Christians teach others that our creator God operates his government like that, making up rules and enforcing them, we reject truth, we choose lies, we align ourselves with the principles of the enemy. And we set ourselves up to identify a righteous cause and embrace the unrighteous methods to pursue it. Satan traps people because into becoming like him by getting them to pursue a righteous cause. Notice I said a righteous cause with unrighteous methods of co coercion and force to promote and impose moral principles. Not mere restraint of those seeking to do evil, which is the righteous role of human governments. Human government's righteous use of their power and authority is to restrain those who seek to do evil. Human governments have no role, nor ability, nor authorization from God to instill or bring about righteousness. And when you pursue righteousness through human governments, you end up abusing and injuring. Human governments only can restrain evil, hold in check forces that seek to do harm. They cannot change hearts and minds. They cannot bring about righteousness. The imposed law lie accepted by Christianity that God's law works like human law has resulted in the false penal substitution theology and obstructs the work of the Holy Spirit. People do not even seek for a transformation of heart because they've got their sins covered and they seek instead to be hidden from God by all these mechanistic things that they teach that Jesus stands between us and hides us from the Father or the blood goes to the account or erase history. Rather than David's prayer, search me and see the wicked way in me, Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. Set of legal mechanisms, imposing laws, rather than instilling love and trust, winning friends, causes individuals to experience greater fear. Whether it's in the church or in our society, the legal mechanisms 
incite fear, not love. Fear of punishment for the sin. Fear of rejection that we've talked about in here already today. I've known people who have claimed under the legal model the blood of Jesus, but they lived in fear that there was some sin they committed that they forgot about and never asked Jesus to erase for them that they'll still be punished for. See, the legal mechanism incites fear. Another trap that I think many are falling into today, especially those, uh, those in the Adventist church who have been indoctrinated in the uh, Revelation seminars and have been taught that uh, Revelation 13 teaches a, a political power system of a, of a lamb-like beast rising in the late 18th century that will um, have the principles of liberty uh, coming up in a new part of the world and identified as the United States, but eventually speak like a dragon in the merging of the political powers and the church powers to pass certain forms of religious practice, particularly requiring people to worship in certain ways. The, the people who have indoctrinated into that are blind to the possibility that people who reject God and don't belong to an organized church could actually form a beastly system of their own. They think you can only have the image of the beast forming if it's an organized church or churches taking control of the government. They fail to see that you can do the same thing with a system of morality and beliefs that are not identified as religious. They're a-religious, but they're still a moral system of philosophy upon which life operates, and they seek to take control of government to force it upon everyone else. That's a beastly system. And many... Christians, particularly Adventists, are completely blind. The one with the organized churches taking control would come from typically a political right side of the aisle. The other one would come from the political left side of the aisle. Satan doesn't care which side he comes from as long as he can get control of hearts and minds through coercive measures. 